As you see, the Gilmer Buckeyes have come back onto the field, and the Jasper Bulldogs doing their last-minute calisthenics. And again, just like they did in the first half, Russ Jasper kind of late coming out. So they're trying to go through last-minute warm-ups to start third quarter, but we are only a minute and counting left until time for the third quarter to start. So I, I can't imagine that the officials are going to let them stay down there much longer and warm up. And here comes Philip Williams. I didn't know if Philip would be able to join us or not. Thanks, Philip. I, I didn't know if you'd be able to make it or not. Well, by the skin of my teeth. Uh, <laughs> gosh, I don't know how you guys can breathe up this high. Uh, and I'm out, of, it. I'm as out of breath as Jasper's defense is chasing the Buckeyes. So let me give you the team stats there. And I don't have the individual stats added up, although not a problem. Gilbert Moy has over 150 yards. Wow. Uh, for the first half, I sound like an old-fashioned obsolete phone call, so breathless here. <laughs> Sorry about that. Buckeyes, 15 first downs to 11 for Jasper. Gilmer, 122 yards rushing. Jasper actually has way more, 198. Wow. 162 yards passing for the Buckeyes, though, to 29 for the Dogs. Total yardage, 284 for Gilmer, 227 for Jasper, indicative of the score. Yes. Uh, Manuel Johnson is 10 of 17. Jasper's quarterbacks are 2 of 8. Buckeyes have punted twice for an average of 51 yards. Uh, Jasper three times for an average of 40. No fumbles in the game, Elwin. And Buckeyes, no penalties. And Jasper, four very costly penalties for 27 yards. People have been asking me all week, Elwin, what I thought. And I said, we're going to beat them by at least four touchdowns. We're right. halfway to that. I still think that. Uh, Jasper reminds me a lot of Tatum. They do. Good offense. They can't stop our. Uh, they can't stop our offense. Is their problem? Nobody can. I. Uh, I still think Gilmer's going to win the game before touchdowns. And uh, if they don't, you see that Jasper will have to do it with smoke and mirrors. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Good being with you, folks. I'm really proud of Jeff Trailer and oh, these absolutely. players and this state championship team. Ellen, it's been a pleasure being with you this season. And now let's. Let's get this job finished and go home and celebrate with everybody in Gilmer is on that other side except us. We're over here. Yes. All right. Thanks a lot for joining us, Phillips. Appreciate it. And uh, I think everybody in Gilmer anticipated the Buckeyes were going to win this thing. I said by two touchdowns. I thought Phillip by four. And Phillip says he's halfway for us to uh, what he predicted, four touchdowns. Well, I'm exactly what I predicted, which was two. I'll and take I, it. And I stand by my no predictions. But I can't predict about getting in politics. I can <laughs> I can predict that the first half we will be leading 28-14. I predict that right now. <laughs> wow. I'm I'm at a loss for words. <laughs> I don't believe that. <laughs> I've never seen that yet. <laughs> okay. Gerardo Cabrera will kick it off, probably over toward number 11, to Kendrick Gilder. <laughs> And he does. Gilder takes it at the 7. Comes across the 10, 15, 20, 25. And he will be down to about the 27-yard line, first to 10, Jasper, from there. Justin Johnson makes another special teams ca tackle there for Gilmer. Well, not only has the doghouse fallen apart, it's smoking from that dry ice down there. <laughs> But they actually back it up to the 26-yard line. So first to 10, Jasper from their own 26. Critical first possession of the second half, and you heard so often that the first three minutes of the third quarter kind of dictate how the second half's going. Moy is the quarterback, and they snap a direct snap instead to number two, Jordan Patton, and he gets to the 30, gain of four, second and six. <clears throat> Good pursuit out there from his defensive tackle position by Terrell Waters. You know, that's got to make it hard for a defense, even as one as talented as the Buckeye Black Flag, because you don't have a clue who they're going to snap it to. <laughs> so it's really almost like having three quarterbacks back there. None you of can't whom, really spy on anybody. None of whom can pass all that well, thank goodness for us. Yeah. <clears throat> Second and six, just underway in the second half. 11-13 and counting. Buckeyes lead at 28-14 this time, and there's a flag on the play. They're going to try a half-back option to a wide-open receiver, but that's coming back. Illegal 
little shift against the Jasper Bulldogs. Coach Danny Love and his coaching staff out on the field saying, oh, you got to be kidding. Ryan Malone caught that mm -hmm. ball on that play that's going to be nullified. Well, I didn't follow it other than to see it was caught because I knew that it was coming back. And right after I denigrated. Yeah, right after I cast aspersions on the ability of their backs to pass the ball one, that was a fairly good pass. Just don't jinx us, <laughs> Russ. <clears throat> yeah, they're passing way better than I ever could, I'll say that. All right, loss of five on the penalty moves the ball back to the 25. That'll bring up second and 11. Jasper obviously had a good play called for the defense the Buckeyes were in. <clears throat> and Coach Danny Love wanting to talk to the official and saying, tell me who shifted and what did he do? And he gets a pretty complete, I'd say, explanation. And you didn't see Russ, Coach Love, arguing, so apparently he was satisfied with what the official told him. <clears throat> well, maybe he wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> he pulls the headset off and talks to the side judge on the near side. And the ball is fumbled, and Patton misses it, and the Buckeyes are going to get a cheap one touchdown by Jake Holliday. You can put the yes. nail. You can put the nail in the coffin now. Yes, sir. Buckeyes lead it 34-14. This baby's going to be over. Yeah, and that last week it happened early on in the first quarter. This, yes. this week the same or similar play happens in the third quarter. Well, all I can say is, Russ, that's what happens when you try to snap it to three different players and you forget who you're snapping it to. It was intended for number seven, Hedrick Bronson. And an alert Jake Holliday all over it, scoops it up. Jake knew he was going to be able to get it in. And the Buckeyes lead it 34-14 with the point after attempt by, De to, by Cabrera to come, and that's good. And our score, the Gilmer Buckeyes, 35. The Jasper Bulldogs, 14. We'll take another quick timeout. Gilmer National Bank proudly invites you to stop by their location at 900 North Wood Street in Gilmer today. You'll love the easy access into and out of the bank on Highway 271. Gilmer National features an international ATM machine that accepts all ATM and credit cards. You can also take advantage of their 24-hour telebank service that allows you to make numerous transactions by phone 24 hours a day. And check out their online internet banking site at www.gnbgilmer.com. Stop by today and you'll say, Gilmer National, that's my bank. Well, Russ, you know, we, I said it at the outset again, the first two or three minutes of the third quarter set the tone for the second half, and it's been set. And as my boss likes to say, it's etched in steel. It's going to be pretty hard for the J-Dogs to come back from that. Well, this black flag defense just keeps coming up with big play after big play after big play this season. And yet, Jasper may have a lot of yards, about 70 yards less than the Buckeyes in the first half, according to Phillip. But the Buckeyes still had 14 more points. And anytime you're leading by 14 in a state championship at the half, that's a pretty good indication of what you got on your side. <clears throat> and now it's going to be number two, Jordan Patton, back at about the 10-yard line. And now he will drop back and take it at the five. Fumbles the ball! And the Buckeyes are all over him. And he pitches back to number one Moy, no, number 11 that is, and a wise decision to pitch as he does manage to get it back to the 15, does the Kendrick Gilder, but Russ, that was kind of a dangerous I'm just pitch. wondering what coach authorized that, or was that totally unauthorized? I, I would be willing to bet you it was totally unauthorized. <clears throat> well, the Buckeyes here, but if you're a senior and you're uh, for Jasper, what's the coach going to do to you yeah. at this point? Can't kick you off the team, <laughs> can right. I think it was a wise decision. It netted them a few more yards. Timeout call by the Buckeyes as they saw a formation they didn't like, and we'll go on and take it with them. Buccal Chevrolet was established in 
oldest in 1966 and continues to be a family-owned and operated company. We take great pride in supporting the Gilmer Buckeyes and our community. Drop by anytime and let Richard, Jay, or Roy buy you a cup of coffee or show you a new Chevrolet or Oldsmobile. We've got a full line of Chevrolets for you to choose from, from Malibus to minivans, suburban trucks, two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, you name it, we've got it. But you may like what we don't have. We don't have high-pressure sales. We treat each and every customer the way we ourselves would like to be treated. Plus, bring in any advertised price, and we'll do our best to beat it. You can also visit us online at Gazelle.com. Gazelle Chevrolet Oldsmobile, proudly supporting Gilmer and the Gilmer High Buckeye. All right, resuming play, first and ten for the Jasper Bulldogs from their own 15-yard line as the Buckeyes utilize their first of three timeouts here in the second half. Not liking the offensive alignment they saw by Jasper. Moy, and back in the backfield to block for him will be Patton. They'll have three receivers to the right side, one to the left. Again, see somewhat of a very similar offense to what the Buckeyes run, as far as alignment at least. Moy dropping back, looking, looking, throws the pass, and it's going to be tipped and then caught. And it's up to the 46-yard line. That was that same guy that had the yep. catch that was nullified. Right Ryan away. Malone. And uh, Skinner tipped the ball, but somehow another Ryan Malone recovered from that and managed to bring it in for a reception. Well, there's no doubt Malone would have caught it if Skinner hadn't tipped it, but when he tipped it, he was able to drop back and get it on the rebound. So just great concentration by Ryan Malone. And again, Jasper just refuses to go away. They find a way, but this Buckeye black flag defense and Buckeye offense just too determined. And here goes Moy. And he's off to the races inside the 30, and his own man trips him up at the 28-yard yeah. yeah. line. Number 13 for Jasper made the tackle. That was yep. uh, Jeremy Horton. <clears throat> I don't know how you credit that statistically, but <laughs> one tackle for Jasper on the Gilmer defense tonight. Yeah. Well, again, you said it earlier in the first half. How big now does that touchdown down yeah, here? As long by the as we can stay three touchdowns yeah. ahead, this game is still well in hand. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Roll clock roll. Moy again on a quarterback draw, and he'll be downed at about the 26-yard line after a gain of a couple. <clears throat> Chaz Kuakai in there. And Coach Jeff Trailer hollering something at the officials. Apparently he thought he saw a hold or something going on in there that the official didn't call. Daniel Dodd in there too, yeah. Second and seven. And this snap and the pitch to Moy. And they had that option pitch perfectly timed. Yeah, that's a good play though by Dodd. Difference. Excellent play by Dodd. And once again, that pitch looked like it went forward to me. I think it did. So all those will be counted as passes statistically if someone is going to be a stickler about it. Boy, Philip will really be having to watch this video. <laughs> yeah, I know. Story, won't he? <laughs> yeah, I'm telling him, I think those are passes. I think they are too. All right, gain of about a yard and a half. Third and six. They're at the Buckeye 24. They've got to get to the 18. Third and six upcoming for Jasper. Black Flag wants to make a play here. And look out. Number two is on his way to the races. He will score. That is Jordan Patton. And just like that, with 8.39 left in the third quarter, it's 35 to 20 in favor of the Buckeyes. Boy, that bad snap that cost them seven while ago really looks bad for Jasper now. That is really, that could come down to being the difference in this game. However, I still don't think it's going to be that close. Well, one thing about it, just like the Tatum Eagles won't, wouldn't, the Jasper Bulldogs are not going to fall over and play dead for us, but you don't get to a state championship no. game, Russ, by doing that. <laughs> Alex Padgett to attempt the point after. Snap, placement, kick, he missed and it. that's missed. No, no look at it. it got through barely. And our score, the Gilmer Buckeyes 35, the Jasper Bulldogs 21, with 8.39 left in the third quarter, and we'll take another timeout. Construction. He specializes in chain link, farm, 
privacy fences, and wood decks. Also, he has a 30-year warranty, residential or commercial, serving all East Texas, fully insured since 1979 with over 25 years experience. You know you're getting the best price in town. Free estimates, financing available. That's Lee Tillman Fence and Construction, Gilbert, Texas, 903-734-5325. Give him a call today. Well, I'll tell you what, Russ, neither one of these teams can relax because just about the time the offense scores, the defense is back on the field, and then the offense is back on again. Been a great game offensively for the Buckeyes, and they have done really an admirable job of slowing this Jasper team down, and they just squib it here. The ball taken at the 15-yard line. That's going to be lovely, and he's dropped out at the 29, first to 10 Buckeyes. Fred Stoneham made a pretty good recovery there. Keep Lovely from making too much more. I thought Lovely might take that corner. Well, you heard Coach Jeff Trailer saying that Jasper was real quick to the corner. Even and, on special teams. Yep, they've proven it. Well, just like we said to Coach Danny Love in the pregame interview, neither one of these teams really deserves to lose. One of them will have to, and right now you got to feel like it's going to be the Buckeyes that survive. Manuel Johnson completes the pass to Bowser at the 43. 45, and then he goes backward, but they're going to give him the forward progress to the 45, saying he was knocked backwards. That's a first and 10 for the Buckeyes. Well, I was going to say, I think they're going to put it down on the 44, but they do give him the forward progress to the 45. <laughs> and counting left here in the third quarter. Buckeyes lead it by 14, 35-21. Manual handoff, lovely, and he's met at the line of scrimmage, no gain. At that time, Jasper just, first time all night, really what Russ managed to counter that Buckeye offensive line. Well, the fans certainly getting their money's worth here tonight. Daniel Johnson dropping back to pass, has his man JT, he's got it! Inside the 40-yard line of Jasper to the 37, first and 10. That's why even when they can stop up the middle, like on that previous play, that doesn't come anywhere near close no. stopping Gilmer with all the weapons Gilmer has. No. There's just too many weapons this Buckeye offensive attack has. <clears throat> 7.20 and counting left. Third quarter. Buckeyes on the march again, wanting to try to Get back into that three touchdown lead. In motion goes Willie Darden, faking the handoff to him. Going downtown, he's got a man open. Caught! First and goal at the five yard line, and I believe that's JT Tennyson, it is, and JT may be hurt. He took a huge hit. Yeah, JT's hurt. Hit. Oh man, what a shot you got, Russ. And JT falls down over on the far sideline. I honestly think when he got hit, it knocked the breath out of him. That's what I think yeah. happened. My little digital replay of it shows that clearly. Yes. <clears throat> That's definitely a front page shot. <laughs> Too far away, though. Well, yeah. And they're going to say timeout, I guess because of JT's injury. I think he just got winded. Yep, they'll help him on over to the sideline. Man, how in the world? Well, I shouldn't ask that. We know how. Sheer drive, determination of J.T. Tennyson to hold on to that ball, knowing full well he was going to get smashed shortly after he made the catch. First and goal, Buckeyes from the five. Seven minutes exactly left here in the third quarter. Hand off to Skinner, and he is going to score. Looked like he was going to be stopped for a minute at the three, and he actually, Russ, it looked like almost stopped and waited by or waited for one of the Jasper defenders to run by him and then scooted on into the end zone. So our score now, the Gilmer Buckeyes 41, the Jasper Bulldogs 21 with a point after to come. Gilmer just matches every score that Jasper comes up with and keeps that three touchdown yep. advantage. Well, I, I'm like you. I, I'm confident we'll hold on for this thing. But it would be nice 
to get a four touchdown lead to really, really put Jasper in a bind here. Here's the snap, the placement, the kick, it's good. And our score, the Gilmer Buckeyes 42, the Jasper Bulldogs 21 with 651 left here in the third quarter of play. And we'll take another quick timeout. Tech Telephone Cooperative is your hometown community partner, providing service to Upshur and the surrounding areas. The success of the local network over the years has made it possible to bring the most advanced technology to our area. ETEX now brings the same friendly hometown service to Gilmer. Internet access and long distance service is now available to everyone in Gilmer. ETEX looks forward to providing your telecommunications needs. Call our office at 903 797 2711 and ask a friendly customer service representative how ETEX can serve your telecommunications needs. ETEX, your local hometown partner, backs the Buckeyes. Well, Russ, we are well on our way to another 60 to 35 game here at Homer Rice Stadium, aren't we? I love games like this, though. This is great. If we're in the lead, me too. Yeah. I would hate to be sitting right down below us, though. I don't want to speak fan. too quick, but I believe that the only state title that Jasper will ever be able to lay claim to will remain after tonight. I believe it's called T.H. Rowe, their pre-integration school, much right. like our Bruce High School. I believe right. they did have a, na a national, a, U a Prairie View Interscholastic League, I think they call it, right. in 1967, I read. But So they do have a title to their credit in that respect, but not a UIL state title, and that's going to go to the Buckeyes. Well, the Buckeyes come out of the quick kick here this time, and Patton takes it on a dead run at the 22, and he'll get all the way to near midfield before he's run out of bounds. The market at the 47, first and 10. And the reason I keep saying Gilmer is well on the way and practically has won this game is because of your friend Robert Schuler. Consider the possibility. There you go. Possibility thinking. You think positive, you envision the result, and I'm already envisioning that Gilmer victory. Speaking of that. <laughs> I know I emailed yeah, you that situation. I think that guy committed tragic, suicide. Yeah, that was tragic in the, incident. In there the Crystal a, Cathedral. There was a seven-hour standoff, and they actually had to postpone the first two uh, performances of their Glory of Christmas pageant, which I've seen live, and it's totally awesome. Moy dropping straight back to pass, going way downfield, and that one is almost intercepted, intended for number 11 to Kendrick Gilder. And the Jasper yeah, fans wanting they, pass interference. Give me a break. Braylon Hector just made a great play. Yeah. And number 11 really had a shot at that ball to Kendrick Gilder, but uh, Braylon Hector made up an NFL-type play. Well, I don't know what they're booing about because there was absolutely no contact there. Just a great defensive play. As we know, the defensive player is entitled to go after the ball just like the offensive player. <laughs> All right, second and 10 from the 47-yard line of the Bulldogs. Quarterback draw by Moy. He's got some room around the right side. Still on his feet inside the 40 down to the 37. That's a gain of 15, 16 yards, first and 10, Jasper. Tackled by Daniel Dodd, and once again, this is fine, but they're still down three touchdowns, and yep. they will be after our next possession. They'll be down yep. three touchdowns again. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And, but it could end up even <laughs> even more points than 60 to 35. Yeah, it very well could, considering we still got a quarter and a half and five seconds left. Well, I find it interesting that the Buckeyes generally leave one of the receivers uncovered on every play, and here's Moy, and this time nothing doing. They give him a yard to the 36. Daniel Dodd, Mario Venters. Somebody else in there that I didn't see, but that front seven is always in there. I'll tell you what, we got more TV cameras down here tonight than Carter's got little liver pills. I see two or three down there on the field, and there's at least two up here beside us. Second and nine from the Buckeye 36. Here's that little pass, and that is definitely, looks like... Uh, That's oh, number 10 minutes. again, Ryan. Uh, yeah. What is it? Brian Hello. Malone. And, uh, well, I was about to say it almost looked like holding downfield on the block that sprung him around the corner. Still didn't get a first down, though. Very close. No, it's third down and Not all four. that close, yeah. He got quite a, quite a ways to go yet. Third and four from the Buckeye 31. They've got to get to the 27. <clears throat> 
5.36 left here in the third quarter. And here goes Moy, and he's, man, oh. kept fighting and got the first down, I do believe. He's that very was, close if he didn't. I thought he was going to be stopped oh. at the 30. That was Cedric Benson-style running. He just yep. wouldn't give up. And he, he does have the first down, first and 10. About four out of the five or six yards he made was after contact. Ball at the Buckeye 26, first and 10. off to the first man through and he'll gain a couple to the 24 second and eight it's like terrell water stripped him up along with uh, chaz kuakai that's number seven cedric or edric rather bronson you mentioned cedric benson so i was about ready to call him a cedric <laughs> second and eight And there was motion toward the line of scrimmage, and the official saw it. That'll cost them five and make up second and 13. Jasper's had a couple of critical penalties like that at key times. And one of them, their coach, you know, disputed a while ago, yeah. the illegal shift. Yeah. And I'm not sure he ever got what he considered a proper explanation. I don't, I don't think he did. I'm sure he's been using that shift all year and probably hadn't been called down in District 22-3A. No, you're probably right. <clears throat> that moves the ball back to the 29 and brings up second and 13 for the Jasper Bulldogs. <clears throat> Jordan Patton in the backfield. Moy dropping straight back to pass, and he's going way downfield, and that's going to be caught. Touchdown. That's number 10, Ryan Patton again. That was an incredible catch because I thought it was intended for number five. No, I think but it was intended for... It was sent, Malone got it. Malone all the way, but Ryan Malone. Sean Weatherspoon was within a couple of yards of him. And that makes it 42 to 27, with still 426 left in the third quarter. And this is a track meet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very entertaining, but I still say Gilmore's got this well in hand. Oh, I agree. Pageant will attempt the point after. <clears throat> Here's the snap, the placement, the kick. He missed oh. that one. That's two in this game. One of them blocked. They've missed two conversions now. Our score remains. And that could be very big, but yes, I don't it think could. it will be because no. I think we'll still maintain the three touchdown advantage and they'll catch up to two and then they'll go back to three again. Well, Buckeyes found a way to get the early lead. And, and they've held it. They've needed every bit yeah. of it, though. But Jasper has not gotten within two touch. No. This is as close as they've ever gotten, and they've lost a point in this exchange. Yeah, they lost a point here. <clears throat> I would a lot rather be a Buckeye fan at this point. You'd a lot rather be two touchdowns, indeed 15 points ahead at this point Absolutely. in a state championship game than have to fight from behind as Jasper has had to do all night. They have. Well, a tribute to this Jasper team, you got to give them credit. As I said and mentioned at the outset and again to uh, Coach Danny Love of the Jasper Bulldogs, reading their website, it appears that his attitude, philosophy, about what he wants to do with his athletic program is almost an exact mirror of well, Coach you know, Jeff Trailer. Had attitude. they gone Division One, they might well be state champions. Yeah. Because they probably could have beaten Abilene Wiley. I since, think they since, could have. Since Abilene Wiley beat Snyder. Absolutely. You mentioned Snyder beat Abilene Wiley. Yeah. Snyder beat Abilene Wiley, and Abilene Wiley won the state championship. Yep. Here's the kick taken at the 13 by Jeremy Skinner. He stopped a minute inside the 25. And he'll be down there at the 22-yard line, first and 10 Buckeyes. Yeah. Temper is beginning to flare a little bit. That was the kicker made, or yeah. pageant, yeah. Well, actually, they had number 22 kicking okay, off. Okay, that's, but pageant, that's pageant unusual. That's teams. unusual for a kicker to be on special yeah, teams. Yeah, no kidding. Just shows you what kind of attitude he has. <clears throat> All right, 
First and 10 for the Buckeyes from their own 23. Manuel Johnson brings in motion Skinner and Mann. Just as he was about to make his cut, a great defensive play, he still manages to pick up four yards to the 27. Well, actually, they'll mark it the 26th gain of three, second and seven. <laughs> Crawford leading Troop 14 to seven at the half, we just heard. Johnson takes the snap, fakes a handoff, looking downfield. Uh-oh, that's intercepted. Number 11, and he can get up and run, and he does. And that's to Kendrick Gilder, and he returns it all the way to the Buckeye 14-yard line, first and 10. Just a great defensive play by Gilbert. Yeah. Black Flag defense has already made a big stop inside the five today, and expect that again. Yeah, they we urgently need them to come to the rescue here. <laughs> they mark it officially at the 12. Keeper by Moy, and he's going to break free and score. Fumble! Nope, they said he had control before the fumble. So that makes it 42 to 33. And they got to go for two here. Yeah, yeah, they will. Nine point Buckeye lead. And yeah. if they go for two and make it, that cuts it to seven. Buckeye fans stunned on the far sideline. Yeah, this is the loudest we've heard the Jasper crowd in yeah. probably the whole game. Yeah, absolutely. We still got three minutes and 30 seconds left in well, the third Well, this second quarter. half is kind of dragging <laughs> from Gilmer's perspective. Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> Snap going to number two. He stopped momentarily, and then the Buckeyes can't get there, and the two-point conversion is good. And it's down to a seven-point ball game. Our score, the Gilmer Buckeyes, double 42. The Jasper Bulldogs, 35. And Russ, the scary thing, Jasper now has scored twice in less than three minutes. Yeah, this is the first time they've been within seven points since the first quarter, I think. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that's Jordan Patton, and uh, all three of the Jasper backs have tremendous speed, yes, without a do. doubt. I believe this guy, Edric Bronson. Edric Bronson, I was reading, 10 or 12 years ago, his cousin, also named Bronson, was on a sprint relay team at Jasper that set a national record in the 400 meter yeah, really. relay, 39.9 seconds. <laughs> and one of these Bronson guys is on injured reserve for some, right. for some pro teams, and they've been in pros eight years. Might be the same Bronson that ran at that track meet. But Gilmer is by far still got the edge. We just got to score this time. Well, you can't fault Manuel Johnson on that interception. That was just a great defensive read and play by DeKendrick Gilbert. And boy, these Jasper fans are making some noise now. Well, this is the most points scored on the Buckeyes all season. Here's a short kick taken at the 28-yard line. And was there... Well, they've matched the point total of Tatum. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was about to say. It's as many points as the Buckeyes have given up all year. So now all we got to do is add 18 to make it 60. We need our 18. <laughs> First and 10 Buckeyes. Well, knowing the fierce competitor Manuel Johnson is, even though that was not his fault on that interception. It's a great defensive play. You know he feels like it's on his shoulders to get that score back. Manuel rolling, and the pass is complete. Gain of three yards to Skinner somehow. <laughs> And boy, there was a defensive I, I was going through that I was afraid he was going to intercept. That's that what I was worried about. I don't think he'd have been fast enough to score, but he looked like he was going to be right in there. <laughs> Ball at the 41. The Buckeyes have got to get it to the 48. 255 and counting left here in the game. 
And man, I'll tell you, these Jasper fans are in it big time now. They were quiet for the better part of three quarters here. Manual quarterback draw, 44-yard line. You said two minutes in the game while ago. I wish it was two oh, minutes yeah. in the game. Three minutes or three yards on that carry. 2.33 in the third quarter and counting, and this clock needs to move more rapidly. We get, we need one more TD. we got to have a first yeah. down here first. The Buckeyes, with all this momentum swing, can absolutely not afford to have to punt the ball away here. Third and four. And, boy, the Jasper guys are making noise now. Manuel dropping back to pass. Looking, looking, can't find anybody open. Now he does, and it's complete to JT for a first down. Woo. Boy, that was big. <laughs> yes, it was. That was about as big as it can get. That will quiet this Jasper crowd a little bit, too. And now the band. Yeah, that does deserve a fight song yes. because that was really big. <laughs> that was as big as it's been so far here tonight, really. 153 and counting left in the third quarter. Oh, it's close to a huddle here. Yeah. That's closest I've seen to a huddle all year. Well, we're down to nine seconds, so they're going to have to get this one straight and snap the ball pretty quick here. And they'll get it off. Four, three, two. Manuel drops back. Here's a big rush, and he throws it. Oh! That's intercepted. The same number 11. Yep. That's the same guy. The Kendrick Gilbert. I thought the ball might have touched the ground, but it didn't. It was very close. Oh, man. We got a ball game now. Yeah, we do. Well, you heard Coach Trailer say the Buckeyes had to protect the ball, and they did an excellent job of it in the first half. Manuel just had a huge rush. The offensive line protection yeah. broke down for the first no, time. No, it was not. It was a stunt. The, well, that, yeah, yeah. You're it right. was really, really just a good defensive call. Boyd throws the pass out to number 10, and he's out across the 45 to the 48-yard line is Ryan Malone. Tackle made by Curtis Brown there, but the momentum has got to be stemmed at some point. Oh, it's got to be. Just a little bit ago, it was 42 to 21. Now it's 42 25, and Jasper has the ball back near midfield. Somebody's calling timeout. Yep. <laughs> well, the black flag defense got to come up for the Buckeyes here. Here's Moy on the option pitch. Number two on the carry has a first down and more as he's down to the Buckeye 43. And that will be Jordan Patton. Terrell Waters made the tackle. They've made a few miscues on that option, but uh, I can see what they mean about the big play offense even yeah. without a passing attack. It's just, it's quick. It's speed. Yeah, it is the speed of Jasper. No well, question about it. Certainly we expect different results than last year in the regional championship, but this team is every bit as fast as Atlanta was last year. Boy on the keeper, and he breaks free and into the secondary, and he's got a first down down to the Buckeye 30. First to 10, Jasper. Tackle made by Jules Johnson. Jules Johnson. Boy, I got to admit, Russ, I'm getting scared now a little bit. Moy is kind of like a cross of Vince Young and uh, Reggie McNeil in the second half. Quick handoff to number two. That's going to be Jordan Patton again. He's down to the 26, game that of four. That should be the last play of the third quarter. Chaz Kuakai made the tackle. Unless Jasper really lines up fast. I think they'll, well, they may. No, they're going to let it run out. That will be the end of the third quarter of play. Our score of the Gilmer Buckeyes, 42. The Jasper Bulldogs, 35. And folks, don't go anywhere.
I had said all along I honestly thought the Buckeyes would win the game by two touchdowns. But I also said that Jasper, I really felt, was almost a carbon copy of Atlanta last year, and they have proven it here tonight. They have got tremendous foot speed well, they've in that done, backfield. They haven't had a real impressive passing attack, but no. they have gotten off a few passes, and that's something Atlanta either didn't need to do last year or did That's didn't. right. That's right. Well, Atlanta last year was just their defense was so dominating. It was. That's very true. And in this game, no defense is dominating. No. The, well, offenses like said, are denied, the offenses are totally in total control of this game. It reminds you a lot of the Tatum game, except for the fact that Tatum never got this close in yeah. the third or fourth quarters. If you knew Gilmer was going to come out on top at the end, it It'd would be, be exciting. exciting. But in, otherwise, it's just heart palpitations creating. Yep. Well, needless to say, there's not a Buckeye fan around that wanted it to get this exciting. Here's Moy on the keeper, and he'll be dropped at the 25 after a gain of a yard, and that'll bring up third and five. Daniel Dodd, Kuakai, Kevin Hollis, and uh, Mario Venters. That's what it takes, four people tackling the guy. But, uh, yeah, that's third and five, and this is a big play. Poor Manuel just standing over there by himself at about the Buckeye 41. This may be the, the key play flag. of the game right yeah, here. Yeah, absolutely. This could be it. Third and five. Boy, the pass complete. And it is going to be a first down. I oh, believe. it's very close. He may, be just, he may short. be just short. Terrence right. Lovely stopped him cold. But they will go for it, Oh, I think. sure. That's Ryan Malone. You're right, I think. They're going to say we're going to measure. <clears throat> There's no question they'll go for it from that distance because it would be oh, too yeah. long for oh, it would yeah. be a long field goal, 37 yards. <laughs> well, the official on the far side thinks it's fourth down as he's marked up. I think it's down. fourth down. And Terrence Lovely. Yep. They're saying about a length Terrence. and a half of the ball, about a half Terrence a yard. Terrence Lovely made an <clears throat> incredible hit. Yeah, he did. Because Malone really had a head of steam going. 11:20 left in the ball game. Buckeyes lead it by seven, 42 to 35. Well, he actually showed it to be a whole lot further than it is. It's more like a third of the football. <clears throat> this is the play of the ball game thus far, folks, without a doubt. Now the question is, who are they going to snap it to? Because they've got three men back there in the backfield again. Why don't they? I can't understand why they don't go under center for a play like this. No kidding. Just a quarterback sneak. Timeout called by the Buckeyes. We'll go on and take it with them. The Wilbur National Bank proudly invites you to stop by their location at 900 Northwood Street in Gilmer today. You'll love the easy access into and out of the bank on Highway 271. Gilmer National features an international ATM machine that accepts all ATM and credit cards. You can also take advantage of their 24-hour telebank service that allows you to make numerous transactions by phone 24 hours a day. And check out their online internet banking site at www.gnbgilmer.com. Stop by today and you'll say, Gilmer National, that's my bank. Well, again, the biggest play of the game up to this point as it's fourth down and about realistically four or five inches. <clears throat> I'm glad now, he's not going under center, but why, me too. why wouldn't they go under center is what I was saying. And now the Buckeye faithful come up and make noise to try to rattle the Jasper Bulldogs. And this is interesting. Number five, a Jasper receiver telling his fans to make noise. You don't want noise when your offense has the ball. <clears throat> Who's the snap going to go to? It's a direct snap, and they pitch it, and it's going to be a first down inside the 20 down to the 15, first and 10. And Moy gets it as it was a direct snap again. Tackle by Tennyson. Jordan Patton again on the direct snap. That's really exciting, but I still don't understand why you don't go under center no, I don't for a quarterback sneak. It's just too much, too much can go wrong when you go that many yeah. 
pitches in a game, and things have gone wrong a few times. Well, they, they, I will give them this. They have that option pitched down to perfection, Russ. They have only blown it about one time, and I think that was on the snap from center. Yep, it was. Well, now you got to watch all three of them again. Jasper going to have to take a timeout, and we'll go ahead and take it with them. Mike Craig Ford Mercury is a proud sponsor of Gilmer Buckeye football and all athletics at Gilmer ISD. Mike Craig Ford Mercury is your newest truck and car dealer in East Texas. Come by and see our new facility and all the great deals we have on new and used cars and trucks. Our new service and parts department is outfitted with the latest equipment and inventory to take care of all of your automotive needs. Remember, at Mike Craig Ford, our name means a great deal. And don't forget to support the Gilmer Buckeyes. Well, Russ, it's literally going to take the black flag defense and every Gilmer fan wishing, hoping, praying, pulling out the lucky rabbit's foot, anything they can think of. You the want to talk about this team is is unbelievable, but but they're really, really going to have to fight here. Yeah, you mentioned being drained in another context coming up here, man. I am drained already. Oh, I am too. And I'm sure if you're a player right now, you're running on adrenaline. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> well, there goes the Buckeye fight song. Well, I predict that Jasper's going to have another bad pitch on that option. You never know who they're going to snap it to. This time it is to Moy. Quarterback draw up the middle. And he is inside the 10 down to the 7. Second down and 1. Tackle by Terrence Lovely. Boy, how big do those missed extra points by Jasper Loon now? Yep. Well, you know, yeah, they got to make an extra point, and that's of not... Of some sort. Yep. Of some sort. Not this... I mean, this time they do if they score. Right. But they have made two two-point conversions. Yeah, they have. So they've really not been hurt by the conversions overall. I doubt they would go for two if no, they score here much, with so much, much time, time here. Yeah. All right, second and one from the seven. Quarterback draw, and it's going to be, I believe, yeah, very him. close. I don't know. Depending on the spot, he may be just a tad short. Terrell Waters. That, that really went nowhere because of Terrell Waters. Third down and... About half a yard needed. 9.50 and counting left in the ball game. Buckeyes lead it by 7, 42 to 35. Yeah, it was 28 to 14 at the half, so Jasper's made up seven of that. Yep. Movement prior to the snap, and the officials didn't see it that time. Bronson gets down to the two. First and goal, Well, they mark him at the three. First and goal, Jasper. Need a big play by the Buckeye Black Flag defense down here. They're just inside the three. Yeah, I doubt if we'll see any more fancy pitches this close. They want to try power running from here on out. Oh, yeah. And uh, we'll see if it works. It's Moy, handoff, Jordan gets in. Or excuse me, Edric Bronson. That makes our score of the Gilmer Buckeyes 42, the Jasper Bulldogs 41. But the PAT is by no means a sure thing for no, this it's team. Not. So I would not be a bit surprised if he missed the extra point again. Or if it's blocked again. for Daniel Dodd to come in charging in there and uh, get another block. That's what I'm thinking. Well, this will be Alex Padgett attempting the point after. Here's the snap, the placement, excellent blocking, and it's no good. It hits the crossbar. That's that college goalpost. Yep, you're right. Well, the difference may be, Russ, even though Jasper played here too, Right after the Buckeyes beat Tatum, Jasper beat Marlin on the same field. But you notice I asked Coach Jeff Trailer about the problems that the Buckeyes had because of the more narrow goal post. And I asked him what they did in the pregame interview, and he said they created their own college width goal post, and obviously it's paid off for the Buckeyes. 
the Buckeyes yep. still hang on to the lead, but by one point, 42-41. And it's how much narrower is it? Do you know <laughs> how much narrower is it? No, close? I don't. I want to say maybe about five feet, but I can't remember. But you can tell by looking at it, there's not as much distance no, between, no. between well, the course, uprights. It's a little more, it makes it a little more out of proportion because the college goalposts are so much higher, yeah. too, though. <laughs> Buckeye fans over on the far <laughs> sideline urging their Gilmer Buckeyes on. And this officially now is the most points scored against the Buckeyes this season. I'm not real surprised at this, though, Russ, because I knew Jasper was going to be the best team we'd face. If you recall, even though I wasn't talking about score, I said coming down, I thought this could be another Pittsburgh-type game. And they squib kick it, and the ball is taken by Jules Johnson, and he has it at the 36. I think that was literally an onside kick attempt. Yeah, 9.06 to go, and <laughs> Gilmer can score here. They're back in command. Yeah, absolutely. And to have dodged this many, to have suffered this much misfortune in terms of Jasper's ability to come back <laughs> and still be ahead, that's a really good thing for Gilmer absolutely. to still be ahead in this game. Well, that third quarter was what really killed the Buckeyes as Jasper came on like a barn burner. Daniel Johnson dropping back to pass, going downtown for the big one, and he's got his man. No, is that intercepted? Yes. Number two intercepted. Oh, man, Jordan Patton intercepts. I thought he had Tay Bowser. Jordan Patton made a great play on that ball. Well, Russ, we knew coming in here on the season, or in the playoffs, Jasper was plus 16 in the turnover ratio. That's basically like a punt, though. Yeah, there's not, not, there's not any damage done from that. No. 8.56 left in the game. First and 10 Jasper from their own 29. They trail by one. Motion again, and the officials didn't see it again. They were calling that early on, and Coach Jeff Trailer runs out onto the field and says, where's the flag? And you can't blame him. There is no doubt that the same running back on the left side shifted. That's the second time in a row they've gotten away with it. And Coach Trailer making sure he tells the officials to watch it. I don't know how they missed it. They were calling it early in the game. Gain of three, second and seven from the... Buckeye are from the Jasper 32. Here's the pass across the 35 to the 36 yard line. That's complete to Malone. That'll bring up third down and three. <coughs> Clock continues to roll. About to go under eight minutes. Yep. Exactly eight minutes left in the game and rolling. Black flag defense needs to find a way to make a play here and get the ball back for the Buckeyes. Moy going on the quarterback draw, and the black flag defense gets it done. No gain, fourth and three, and Jasper will have to punt. That is the biggest defensive play the Buckeyes have come up with tonight. Russ. Jazz Kuakai got made the first contact, and uh, Terrence Lovely came in there too. Yeah, that's a that's big, huge. big three and out there. Huge. 7, 17 and counting left in the game. Jeremy. And number 13, Jeremy Horton, to punt it away to Manuel Johnson. Manuel will stand at the Buckeye 32. Manuel just says fair catch, and he's got it at the 35 for the Buckeyes first and 10. <laughs> 6.54 left in the game, and Russ, this is where the Buckeyes need to find a way to grind it out, score, and get ahead by eight. All we need is one more touchdown. Yeah, that'll view. do it here, I think. I really think it will. We really don't need that, but it would be safe. It would make him safer game. Well, the problem, well, I don't think Jasper would cry a field goal anyway. The problem is you want more than a three-point lead.
Jasper putting a lot of folks up close to the line of scrimmage. Manuel rolling out, has his man, and that one's complete at the 50, 45, 30, 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Tay Bowser. The Buckeyes go back in the lead, 48-41, with 6.41 left in the game. That ought to be the ball game right yes, there. Yes, sir. 60, 65 yards. That ought to do it. You just can't say enough about Manuel Johnson. You know he was bound to be down. Three interceptions. The big play by the black flag defense. But that just shows the no quit in Manuel Johnson. I believe Johnson. you just violated one of our basic tenets coming in, but okay. Well, I mean, you can't. I mean, it was part of the game. I mean, it's, that's got to be pointed out. He just never gave up and found a way to make it big. Here's the big, big extra point, and that's good. And the Buckeyes lead it by 8, 49-41 with 6.41 left in the game. We'll take another commercial break. The Gilmer Mirror at 214 Marshall at the intersection of highways 154 and 271 in Gilmer, which is the Gilmer Buckeyes the best of luck. The Gilmer Mirror has been bringing Upshur County citizens hometown news since 1877, making it Upshur County's oldest business institution. Be sure to see next Wednesday's edition of the Mirror for photos and a complete game summary of tonight's Gilmer Buckeye game. That's the Gilmer Mirror, proud to be a part of Gilmer and Upshur County. Wow, how big is that one? Huge, that's how big it is. <laughs> I, I'll tell you, I know as drained as we are, Russ, these players and these fans have got to be even more so, especially the players. I mean, they have left it out there. This is absolutely two offensive juggernauts just battling out like a heavyweight championship fight which is basically what it is. it is. Never say die in either team. And as I said to Coach Danny Love in the pregame interview, neither one of these teams deserves to lose. They both are quality teams, quality coaches, quality athletes. And clearly, Division Two has the best team in 3A this year. Oh, yes. Not even close. Not even. Not even. Kendrick Gilder and Edric Bronson are the deep men, along with the near side, Jordan Patton. They'll all stand at about the 15 to 17 yard lines. And here comes Gerardo Cabrera to kick it away. And they're going to kick it to that far side again. It'll be taken at the 10-yard line by DeKendrick Elder. He goes straight up the gut and will be dropped on a great tackle at the 34-yard line. It's like Terrence Lovely got him. Daniel Dodd. Daniel Dodd. Ah. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> <laughs> away from a state championship for the Gilmer Buckeyes. And you just can't say enough about the concentration of the Buckeye offense, the determination of Tay Bowser to snag that pass, and then what he did with it when Manuel Johnson laid it right on the numbers, getting into the end zone, giving the Buckeyes the eight-point lead after the point after by Cabrera. Just tossing it way up, and that is caught. A circus catch at the Buckeye 45 by DeKendrick Elder. It really looked like, I was looking for Skinner to intercept I that. was too. And 11 just needs to be commended. That was just like an impossible play. Well, I said circus catch. Yeah. And that's exactly what it was. And he looks like he may be injured. He goes down on two knees. And I've got to grab something over here in my bag, Russ. I'll be right back. Well, again, it's just, just absolutely never say die. Neither one of these teams 
you're going to make a highlight reel of this game, it would last 20 or 30 minutes. Yeah, it would. And as deservedly so, a great standing ovation for DeKendrick Elder. Or Gilder, rather, excuse me. First and 10 at the Buckeye 45 with 6.22 left. And we've got Moy and Edric Bronson in the backfield. Moy dropping back to pass, and that is complete to number five. And he is all the way down to the Buckeye 15-yard line is Sean Weatherspoon. Curtis, Curtis Brown made the stop. I was afraid that was going to go over six. I was, too. Great job by Curtis of getting there and stopping it. Man, oh, man. Total offense figures on both sides are bound to be staggering. Well, it's going to be more than what we had in Tatum, and that was nearly 1,100 yards when we played Tatum here two weeks ago. Moy on the keeper, and he is in trouble and dropped. Loss is back to near the 20. That was Jake Holliday. About a five-yard loss where they're giving it. Well, no, actually, they're going to mark it to the 20, and that'll be four-yard loss. And Coach Jeff Trailer arguing with that. He thinks the loss should be about at the 17 or 18. Well, that would actually give them a break. You mean the I 22 mean the 22, or 22 or 23, excuse me. Yeah. I think they definitely got a gracious spot there. <laughs> Second and 14. They've got to get to the Buckeye 6. Moy on the pitch out to... Number seven, and that's going to be Patton, and he is to the 12-yard line. Still need about five. Yep, actually six. He's got to get to the six, and he is at the 12. <laughs> Third and six from the 12, 440 and counting left here in the ball game. <laughs> I don't know if I can handle overtime, so I sure hope we just stop him here. Oh, man, me too. Kilmore had to go to double overtime to win their state They got a long way to achieve that. They got to get eight points. Moy, quarterback keeper pitches. Nobody there. And it's going to be a touchdown for Jordan Patton. This is the biggest two-point conversion in the state of Texas probably all season right there. Absolutely. A two-point conversion is, is what they have to have. And if Gilmer can stop it, this game's over. Yep. It's well. They could still kick an onside kick. Which I don't I'm think sure they'll do that again. No, I don't think because if they, they don't had, get the two-point conversion, well, they will. There's still four minutes to go, and they had very little success with it last time. Well, that's true. But they may burn a timeout here. The biggest two-point conversion attempt in the state of Texas probably all season. Well, it's 49-47 Gilmer with the two-point conversion attempt, and you're absolutely right. As Jordan Patton calls the timeout. Wow. Nearly 100 points scored in this game. Yep. 96. 96. Goodness. So that exceeds the Tatum game by 11. Yeah. No, that was 60-35. That was 95. Oh, that's right. It exceeds it by one. You're right. But it did exceed it just on that play. Yeah, on that, on that play, absolutely. Well, I guarantee you there's not a single solitary soul that's left this stadium tonight. Oh, this has left me breathless. I'm telling you. It takes everything you got that you can muster to do this broadcast. The only this way to really have a good time watching this game is if you weren't for either one of the teams. Yeah. Because then it would just be an exciting track meet. Right, which is what I said last year. When I covered the Super Bowl between the New England Patriots and Carolina Panthers, I really didn't care who won. Well, as Russ said, biggest two-point conversion attempt in the state of Texas this year. And Moy is not even behind center. It's either going to be Patton or Bronson that take the snap. 
And they're running down on time again. They're going to have to use another timeout. That's Ooh. their last. That's going to be costly. You're not kidding. You wonder what was discussed in the previous timeout. However, part of it, I think, is with this uh, coming up to the line and reading. Yeah. When the defense shifts in a way no one anticipates. Absolutely. That's what causes those timeouts in a lot of cases. Man. But they're out now. Well, regardless, Russ, of who wins this game, boy, there's going to be an awful lot of hype in the newspapers and on TV about what an exciting contest this was for the fans. You don't have to hype it. I mean, it's yeah. there. Well, whoever comes out on top is literally going to know they were in a championship fight down to the wire. And the snap is to number two, and he's not there. The Buckeyes stop him. He did not get in. The Jasper fans think he did. The officials say no. And now they're going to talk about it. How can you talk about it? He was stopped short. Buckeyes say no good. No good it is. Woo! Woo! Man. About four people made the tackle. McKnight, Venters, Dodd, everybody, just about everybody on the Gilmer defense, which we really never, well, we did set the Gilmer defense, but you just figure on the front, yeah. front seven was all in there. Chaz was in there. Oh, man. Well, now they do onside kick it. Yeah, they got no timeouts, but there's four, yeah. 415, but they've shown no sign that they can really stop Gilman. So they've got Don't to get jinx. the ball back. Well, <laughs> You're right. I'm just not quite that superstitious as you are. Well, like I say, I, don't I just take nothing for granted when yeah. it's this close, man. I don't celebrate the summer, the winter solstice. <laughs> <laughs> so the superstitions are for another group. 49-47. Gilmer still on top with 4:15 left in the ball game. Well, I think it's a safe thing to say, Russ. Regardless of who wins this game, nobody's going to get much sleep tonight. Because if the Buckeyes hold on and win, the Jasper Bulldogs are going to say if we could have just made our extra points, we would have been the state champ. I don't think there's going to be anybody going to these blithering message boards either. No. I don't think there's anything to say. It no. was all left it out on the field. It was set on the field. It was set on the field, and it was left on the field, and that's the, that's the way a classic game should be. Yep. Speaking of which, now this would be a good game to have ESPN2 yeah. show. This, this would draw interesting attention nationwide. Sure would. <laughs> yeah, Fox Sports, Fox Sportsnet really missed a beat not televising this. They one. did. But, of course, the UIL normally does not ever televise anything but the 5A championship and 4A, game. And 4A, I 4A sometimes. Yeah. I don't think the Kilgore game was televised live today, though. Well, you see by their lineup, they've got no choice but to go for the onside kick. And it will be Edric Bronson. The Buckeyes have their hands team up. Here's the ball, and it's going to go out of bounds. The Buckeyes will get it where it goes out, which should be about the 35-yard line, and Bronson just put too much foot into it, Russ. That's why I thought they probably wouldn't go back to that, other than the fact they clearly can't stop Gilmer, so they had to. Right. Because they've showed no success on it in the previous attempt. Man, oh man. Buckeyes have it first to 10 at the 35. They are four minutes and 15 seconds away from a state championship trophy. <clears throat> Johnson, quarterback draw. He's got a hole. And up to the 39-yard line, it closed quickly, but a gain of four, second and six. He's number 53, James Johnson. But now, 
The clock cannot be stopped by the Jasper Bulldogs. This might be where the Buckeyes just try to run the clock. They don't need to do anything now but just methodically move down the field. They'll take every precious second off of that clock they can before snapping the ball. Buckeyes still have one timeout left. Jasper's out. Hand off up the middle, and that's nothing doing. Loss of a yard to the 38. And that was 53 again. James Johnson has made two plays in a row. <laughs> and lest anybody think it might be, no, that is not our James Johnson from Gilmer. <laughs> Proves you're a country boy. <laughs> country, that? country people are the ones say, are you kin to so-and-so, yeah. Johnson? You know, that's just a... Yep. <laughs> Biggest play of the night for the Buckeyes offensively. They don't want to give the ball back to Jasper here. They really need this first down. 2.52 and counting left. Uh-oh, and we've got flags prior to the snap. Delay of game on the Buckeyes. 2.50. Shoot. That moves the ball back to the 33 and brings up a third and 12. If the Buckeyes could pick up a first down, Russ, that would basically do it. And they already start a quick whistle to start the clock after the penalty. Buckeyes are going to have to get this play in. They're down to 11 seconds. Eight, seven, they're going to get it off. Eight men up. Actually, 10 men up. Here's the pass, and it's incomplete, and a mugging and a penalty on Jasper, as there should have been for pass interference. Absolutely, the defender grabbed the helmet of the intended Buckeye receiver. Was that before number? the ball got there. Who was the intended receiver? <laughs> I was so busy getting ready to call the pass interference, I got to be off. Uh, Oh, what's this? Oh, okay. That's going to be, they're just going to call 15 yards from the original line of scrimmage. Okay, I think it was Hollis. Yeah, you're right, it was. Yep. First and 10 Buckeyes. Now the Buckeyes can afford, and uh, the assistant coaches for Jasper arguing that the ball was tipped, but I don't think it was. 2.46 left. Buckeyes just want to run out the clock here. Manual quarterback draw. He's at midfield and will be down there. Well, no, he didn't get to midfield. They said his knee went down at the 49, so a gain of one. Second and nine. Derek Bean made the tackle. Boy, Jasper's really... The fact they have no timeouts is really a leg up for Gilmer. Yes. But you know, speaking of Hollis, I don't think he's caught a pass all evening. They've been keying on him. He caught one pass. Yeah, okay. he did catch one. But he doesn't have a touchdown yeah. reception tonight. He's tied up some of their defenders though who have been keying on him. Yeah, he has. Second and nine. Johnson. And he's going to be dropped back at the original line of scrimmage. In fact, a yard below it at the 47. Third and 11. Yeah, but look at that clock. Oh, I know. One Pretty more first down will do it for sure. Not even even without a first down, they're just about cooked, I believe, because I'm not gonna they're going to get that. the ball after a punt down at about the 10 at best. Yeah, but they, they have they, shown the ability, well, just like the Buckeyes, to hit a big play. That's why not I a say 90 yard take, pass. You can't take not anything for granted yard. yet. I still I'm firmly believe the Buckeyes will win it. I don't see much hope at all for Jasper. Not that they should have him. Third and 11, 123 left in the game. Johnson rolling out. Looking, looking, has JT if he can find him, but he can't find him. Has a man deep downfield, and it's incomplete. Boy, number two made a heck of a play. Yeah, he did. Number two on our number two, that was that was uh, Jordan Patton on Hollis. Kevin Hollis literally played defender that time because actually the defender was in front of Hollis. 1-11. One, one, one left in the game. Manuel Johnson to kick it away. And a 
can't tell who that is. That's number 10, I believe. Ryan Malone, yes it is, to return it for Jasper. They've got most of their team up close, but a good job of blocking. Here's Malone. He feels it, fumbles the ball! And the Buckeyes down it at the 10, and you're right. They're going to have to go 90 yards. And Without any timeouts. Out. Without a timeout. It would take a, I don't know. I won't say it, but I mean, Gilmer has clearly got this on lockdown. Let's say it. I believe in positive thinking, Ellen. You don't I give me that good. look. I, I, just, I just won't take anything for granted until that final horn. That's why people tell you you need to be more positive. <laughs> that is why. Well, I believe this black flag defense will find a way. I will tell you that. I firmly believe that. Moy dropping back to pass. In trouble. He's chased and throws it away. Incomplete. Second down. And there's a flag in the end zone. Now, what is that? Timeout, Coach Jeff Trailer says. If it's holding in the end zone, it's a safety. Oh, well, that's what he's saying. It's holding in the end zone and a safety, maybe. Oh, you know what they're saying? They are saying that's intentional grounding. The number 11 was, it was thrown at number 11. Yeah, he was coming up that way. They're going to pick the flag up and wave it off. Yeah, number, yep. number 11 was pretty close to the ball. I'd love to yep. see that call, but 11 that's, was. That is the correct call. Yeah, DeKendrick Gilder was in the area of the ball. Yeah, he was. Now, he had to come back for it, but it doesn't matter. As long as he's within about five yards, it's okay. All right, second and ten with 57 seconds left. Boy, quarterback draw. He's got some room. But he stopped after a gain of four. Great job defensively, third Daniel, down and six. Daniel Dodd, and that should just about do it because they can't stop the clock. No, they can't. This is going to be like the Marshall Ennis game where the Marshall quarterback couldn't manage the clock. Well, you do get in high school, if they get the first down here, they'll get a timeout to reset the chains. And it's oh, a complete it. pass. It's all, coming, down. it's all coming apart the seams for him now. Yep, fourth down and six. Oh. 33 seconds left. I, mean, I don't want to hear any sour grapes from Jasper fans after this. <laughs> I don't either. But you know there they will should be, be some. They should be giving their team credit yeah. for fighting from 21 down to make a ball game of this thing for a quarter plus a couple of minutes. Fourth down and six. Without a doubt, this will be the ball game if they don't get the first down. Moy dropping back to pass. He's got some running room. He will have the first down at the 22, and it'll yeah, stick out for a little bit longer. The clock's down to what? 25 seconds. They just can't. They, they're going to have to go for the Hail Mary, and I don't, yeah. I don't think he's got it in him. Well, you can bet now Manuel Johnson coming in to play defense. The Buckeyes know exactly what you yeah. just said, Russ, is it. They're going to have to go downtown for the whole banana. Tay Bowser in there, JT Tennyson, Terrence Lovely, Manuel Johnson in the defensive backfield. Moy gets a snap, first and ten. Gets a big rush. The pass incomplete, second yeah. and ten. Had he caught that, the game would have been over because yeah, they couldn't line that's up right. again. 21 seconds left. You can just sense the volcanic eruption about yes. to, about to explode on that Gilmer side of the of the, the Vister side of the stadium here at Homer Bryce. Well, Russ, you said a little earlier when this game started getting close, when it was back to one point, 42-41. If we know the Buckeyes would win, I'd love to see this kind of game. You may be prophetic and not realize it on that projection. Second and ten. Motion again. And there is a fumble. And it looks like the Buckeyes, no, they say incomplete pass. His arm was going forward. I don't know about that one. And Coach Jeff Trailer furious on the sideline, and you can't blame him. There did not appear to be an arm going forward, Russ. It just delays the inevitable, though. 
You could you could hear the eruption beginning. Oh yeah. That was like Mount St. Helens yeah. beginning to spill over, form the new lava, Absolutely. venting ash, and pretty soon it's going to be magma everywhere. Yes. And lava flows all the way to Seattle. <laughs> Boy, you're really getting it going now. <laughs> Third and ten. <clears throat> Fifteen seconds left. Moy throws a pass that's complete to number two. And he's going to be driven out of bounds after he has a first down with nine, nine seconds. seconds left at the 35-yard line as Jordan Patton manages to keep the suspense alive at least for another couple seconds. They got... I'd have somebody playing center field, and they yeah. do. Yeah, yeah. First and 10, 49-47, Gilmer, nine seconds left. And here goes the downtown pass, incomplete. One more play, I'll do it. seconds left, yep. Second and 10. Buckeye fans starting to erupt. It's like counting down New Year's Eve from Times Square. And New Year's Eve coming, New Year's celebration is coming a couple weeks early for Gilmer. Yes, sir. Christmas, New Year's, and 4th of July rolled into one. Yep. Timeout called by the Buckeyes. And let me just go on and announce, we are going to keep the cameras rolling here on our way down. We still got plenty of tape, Troy? Okay. We're, we're going to keep the cameras rolling on my journey down toward the field for our post-game interview. And Russ, <laughs> like I said earlier, if you'll make a few comments along the way here and there, I think I'll just mostly let let the viewers at home just take in the atmosphere, soak it in, okay. soak it in of a state championship game aftermath, which ought to be pretty special just to watch yeah, you're unfold. Right. And then when we get down, Troy, I'll uh, cue you on the headset, and uh, or rather on the excuse me on the uh, walkie talkies and. We'll turn the wireless on for the post-game celebration down on the field. Well, I honestly don't think, Russ, I have ever had a game take so much out of me, and I can just imagine what it's like for those players down there on the field because it has to be magnified to them a hundred times Absolutely. what we're feeling up here. And they're going to get their second win, though, in about four seconds. Yes, they are. You can't say enough about the pride and character, and the Buckeyes have got way, 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 way deep. They're going to go with the halfback option. Well, no, they're not. That's it. Oh, no. That is it. Well, maybe not. That is. The Buckeyes have won the state championship. The final score for Gilmer Buckeyes, 49, and the Jasper Bulldogs, 47. The first championship in the history of Gilmer High School. Congratulations, Buckeyes. Congratulations, Buckeye fans. And everybody left it on the field as Jake Holliday, Russ, ultimately was the one who ended up literally finally getting the running back after about the third pitch down. Well, congratulations to the 2004 Class 3A Division II state champion Gilmer Buckeyes. You can't say enough, though, about how this Jasper Bulldog team fought hung in there, hung in there, hung in there. But this was just a team of destiny as they proved them throughout the year. Our final score, the Gilmer Buckeyes 47, or 49, and the Jasper Bulldogs 47.